Hey everyone, and welcome to Natural Language Processing, Deep Learning in Python, Part 6. This course is all about combining natural language processing, also known as NLP, with the magic of deep learning. As you might already know, NLP has been around for a very long time, but just recently, deep learning has been used to transform the field in the same way that it's transformed computer vision and reinforcement learning. So at a very high level, what is NLP, and why should you want to learn it? Well, when we picture AI, we often picture ourselves talking to a machine. This is, in many ways, one of the ultimate achievements of AI. When we can have a conversation, but the conversation is so smooth and natural, we can't tell if we're talking to a machine or a human. And you might think, well, that sounds a lot like science fiction, but scientists are hard at work every day making this a reality. So you may have noticed, all the major tech companies have their own personal assistant nowadays. Apple has Siri, Microsoft has Cortana, Google has Google Assistant, Amazon has Alexa. Competition breeds innovation, so I'm very hopeful that we can make a lot of progress in NLP in the near future. But let's dig a little deeper. What technologies are required to make something like a personal assistant to actually work? So first, when you speak into a microphone, that's just sound waves. So the first step is that we need to turn those sound waves into words. We call that speech to text, and this is a classic problem in NLP. What happens after we turn what you say into text? Well, then we need to figure out what you mean. You can think of this as sort of a text classification problem. We take in some text and we try to predict what you're trying to say. For example, you might say, hey Siri, can you get me a movie ticket for Deadpool on Saturday night? And from this, the system has to figure out a few things. First, that you wanted to buy a movie ticket. Second, what movie you want to see. And third, when and where you want to see it. Then it might ask you to confirm those things. So the system also has to be able to convert text into speech. This is called, quite appropriately, text to speech. Now a system like this is a result of several state-of-the-art components and it requires tens or hundreds of engineers to make it work. Of course, in order to build such a system, you first need to be able to build its components. This is the era of deep learning, and of course, deep learning is being used to build state-of-the-art versions of many of these components. And that brings us to this course. What are these components and how do they work? So we started this video at quite a high level, almost at the level of science fiction, robots that you can converse with. Of course, this is a deep learning course, and we aren't concerned with science fiction, we're concerned with the low level. How do these components work? How do they make use of deep learning? And how can we build them? This course starts out with one of the most important advances in deep NLP research, which is word embeddings. Of course, before doing this, we'll do a quick review to get you up to speed on all the knowledge you'll need to make it through the rest of the course. Word embeddings allow you to map words into a vector space. Once you can represent something as a vector, you can perform arithmetic on it. So this is where the famous king minus man equals queen minus woman comes from. We'll be looking at two of the most popular algorithms for finding word embeddings, which are words of ec and glove. Next, we'll look at how words of ec and glove, although developed independently and on the surface seem totally different, are actually very similar. Next, we'll move on to using deep neural networks for NLP. Of course, the central architecture used in deep NLP is the RNN, the recurrent neural network. Recurrent neural networks are special kinds of neural networks that allow us to model sequences. And the reason why that's useful, of course, is because a sentence is nothing but a sequence of words. After that, we'll look at an even more powerful model of deep neural networks for NLP. You might notice that sentences come in all shapes and sizes. Some are very short, like one or two words long, but you can have very long sentences, like one that's 30 words long. But how do we, as humans, make sense of such long sentences? Well, the truth is, we don't conceptualize sentences as sequences of words, but rather we give it a hierarchical structure. 
A sentence is made up of a group of phrases, and each of those phrases could be made up of smaller phrases. We don't make sense of sentences by thinking of each word from start to end, but rather by the relationships between these phrases. In other words, a sentence is more like a tree. And therefore, one might infer a neural network shaped like a tree, or a recursive neural network, might be the best type of neural network for tasks such as text classification. In fact, recursive neural networks have led to state-of-the-art results. This is one of the most technically challenging sections of any of my deep learning courses, so it's really going to test your limits when it comes to understanding algorithms and Theano or TensorFlow coding ability. So just to summarize this lecture and give you a short overview of the outline of this course. First, we're going to look at word embeddings. This is going to involve learning about famous algorithms like words of ec and glove. Second, we're going to look at how RNNs can be used to solve deep NLP tasks. And finally, we're going to look at how recursive neural networks, a much more powerful but technically challenging type of model, can be used to obtain superior results on deep NLP tasks. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in class.